so you are welcome back in in the class we continue with the data on production and we were discussing about uh, area production and yield of rice in india so you go two kind of tables here one is on the left side other is on the right side so in one you get data on coarse rice coarse rice on the right side you get data on milled rice at world level data is reported in terms of calendar year like full 2010 11 12 13 14 15 up to 2020 in india we report data for uh, two years means like 2010 11 a kind of financial year or you can say it starts on uh, when when this agricultural year starts which month which time can anyone tell me suppose it is 2010 11 so it must be starting somewhere in some month in 2010 and ending in 2011 so anybody has any sir first june first july it will start and on the 30th of june it will end okay good so here you see it is 2010 11 11 12 12 13 19 20 something like that so in india we report like this or in fao fao report like this on the left side suppose it is suppose it is uh, 2019 2019 for fao then in india it will be 1920 2019 20, 20 suppose it's, it is 2016 for fao then for india it will be 2016 17 something like that so some little variation may be there in the data but they are very close data so you can see that uh, how much is the coarse rice yield in different years and milled rice yield so at present we have about 118.8 million tons of milled rice yield and you you can easily convert one into other the rough rice or coarse paddy can be converted into milled rice and vice versa so multiply milled rice by 1.49 because on an average we know that 60.66.7% milled rice recovery is there if you take 100 units of uh, uh, coarse rice you will get 66.7 units of milled rice therefore this factor 1.49 or 0.67 can work so multiply milled rice by 1.49 to get coarse rice or divide coarse rice by 1.49 to get milled rice multiply coarse rice by 0.67 to get milled rice and divide milled rice by 0.67 to get coarse rice it is simple mathematics one can do to convert these rices now <clears throat> in india what is the position of different states so you can see state rice and percentage contribution in all india rice production west bengal is the leading state is state which produces produce uh, 15.57 million tons of rice during 2019-20 and the contribution was 13.2 closely followed by up 13.1 so they are neck to neck fighting neck to neck this west bengal and up but west bengal is still higher punjab contributes about 11.78 million tons of rice in 2019 20 and contribution is about 10% so all these three states are contributing 36.2% of the total production of rice so more than one third is coming from these three states so you can see the percentage contribution of different states in india so west bengal this is this was for different year 20 Uh, 18 19 west bengal 14% up 30 13% mp 4% punjab 11% assam 5% chatisgarh 6% so important states are west bengal up and bihar now see uh, production of milled rice in different seasons seasons are also important because we grow rice in three different seasons kharif uh, kharif kharif season rabi season and zaid season i will discuss in detail different seasons but primarily there are two season kharif season and rabi season the rice which is grown in summer season is included in kharif rice 
So therefore you get two rice, Kharif rice and Rabi rice. So overall, you can see the production, how the production has increased from 2007-8 to 2019-20. So Kharif rice has contributed about 102 million tons of milled rice in 2019-20. And Rabi rice is contributing about 16.4. So total is 118.4 or 118.8. So next is percentage of total production in Kharif. So if you take the average, so you can say on an average, 86 to 87% rice in India is coming from Kharif crop. And 13 to 40% is coming from Rabi crop. So that is the message of this table. Uh, this table you can see in your free time. This is uh, not just for rice, for wheat, for maize, for total nutri cereals, pulses, food grains. So you can see which are the states, major states, which are contributing towards uh, production handsomely. So you can say West Bengal, Uttar Pradesh, Punjab, they contribute maximum for rice, 13%, 13%, 9.95%. For wheat, you can see Uttar Pradesh, uh, uh, gives the maximum production. Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Punjab, you can see the data. For maize, Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh, Telangana. For coarse cereals, coarse cereals, total nutri cereal or coarse cereals, uh, Rajasthan, coarse cereal means all cereals, millets minus rice and wheat. All cereals, millets minus rice and wheat is your coarse cereal. So Rajasthan, Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh, Total pulses, Rajasthan, Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh. Total food grain, Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, and Punjab. So Uttar Pradesh has 18.55% contribution towards production of total food grains, means serious plus pulses. Madhya Pradesh, 11.13% and Punjab, 10.1%. So you can go through these data. These data are important to understand the position of different crops in economy as well as many times uh, questions are asked in your quiz exam and also when you face interview, people have a tendency to ask such kind of data. So better to, to be clear about these kind of data. Now see <clears throat> area in million Indian states where we get maximum area. So for area production was highest in West Bengal, but area is highest in UP. So naturally the productivity of West Bengal will be more because West Bengal is producing more yield with less area compared to UP. Therefore, productivity is more. So you can see UP contributes 5.74 million hectare and West Bengal 5.49. And third state is Chhattisgarh, which is 3.67. So you can remember at least the sequence of the state, UP, West Bengal, Odisha, and Chhattisgarh. I'm sorry, Odisha is at number three. Uh, yes. Now production is uh, West Bengal, UP, Punjab, AP. And productivity, you can see Punjab has four tons per hectare. And remember this is with respect to milled rice. And uh, this is uh, for Punjab 4.03 tons per hectare, highest productivity in Punjab, followed by Andhra Pradesh 3.77. And then Tamil Nadu, Tamil Nadu is your uh, 3.76 and Telangana 3.69. So this is how productivity is varying in Indian states. Now see why yields are low in India compared to China. Already told you that hybrid area is much more in China compared to India. And why Indians or Indian farmers do not like to grow rice or do not like hybrid rice to eat because it does not uh, taste them better. The main, main issue is with the taste. They don't like taste of this particular rice, hybrid rice. Therefore, the area under hybrid rice is less in India. Other reason could be awareness that farmers are not uh, much aware of the uh, varieties or hybrids of rice. And also the seed rate is expensive. One kg seed of uh, hybrid rice may cost you around 230 or 240 rupees per kg. But normal rice you can buy in 15, 20 rupees or 30 rupees per kg. That is also a, a hindrance. And also most of the good hybrids are in pub, uh, private sector. And private sector, they charge more money. 
of course the first hybrid uh, was released by the state uh, sector or government sector aprh released by apri andhra pradesh rice research institute maruteru in 1993-94 first hybrid was released in india productivity of hybrid rice has advantages uh, 15 to 25 some people say 10 to 20% but it is advantage so on an average you get one and a half tons to two tons more yield of hybrid rice than inbred varieties in india the area under hybrid rice is 6.8% which is very small out of 44 million hectare we have 3 million hectare area under hybrid rice and low use of pesticide and fertilizers in india compared to china subsidies in china on rice cultivation and farm implements and less irrigated area uh, in rice in india it is 60% in china it is 90% so that also makes difference and and now you see what is irrigated area this is your extra notes or extra study because right, right now you can see on the left side that irrigated area in india is 60% 6% so we should know what is irrigated area what is meant by irrigated area so these are official definition of irrigated area and related terms irrigated area the area is assumed to be irrigated for cultivation uh, through such sources as canal government or private tanks tube wells other wells and other sources of water means if any source of water is used to uh, irrigate the crop in area that particular area is your irrigated area now four terms uh, quite uh, relevant to irrigated area net irrigated area so the definition is area irrigated through any source once in a year for a particular crop in any one crop if one irrigation is given then it is called as net irrigated area area irrigated through any source once in a year for a particular crop next is opposite of it net unirrigated area so this is much easier to define area arrived by deducting the net irrigated area from the net sown area so you can easily deduct uh, this uh, irrigated area from the net sown area then it becomes net unirrigated area another two close terms are total irrigated area or gross irrigated area like you see gross cultivated area and net cultivated area similarly or gross cropped area gross cropped area and gross cultivated area is same uh, net net cropped area and net sown area is also same or net cultivated area so similarly gross irrigated area total area under crops irrigated once and more than once in a year means at least it should be irrigated once or maybe more than once in a year is your gross irrigated area it is uh, counted as many times as the number of times the areas are cropped and irrigated in a year means how many crops are you are growing and that is also taken into consideration and uh, agronomy student under, understand that how this uh, total cropped area is worked out suppose in one area you you have area 1 hectare area in 1 hectare area you are taking two crops in a year then two hectare is the gross crop area or gross cult cultivated area but net cultivated area is one hectare similarly if these two crops are irrigated at least once then the area will be two hectares the total or gross irrigated area will be two hectares so it is counted as many times as the number of times the area are cropped and irrigated in a year now total gross unirrigated area it is the area arrived at by deducting the gross irrigated area from the gross sown area or gross cultivated area now it's state wise area under irrigation in rice so you must have seen that uh, productivity was high in punjab and also in some other states so it is mainly be uh, because of irrigated or availability of the water so you can see punjab irrigated area is 99.7% Andhra Pradesh ninety six point six, Tamil Nadu and so on. So you can see some states like Haryana, Punjab, almost hundred percent irrigated. Telangana ninety seven, ninety six percent Andhra, ninety five percent Tamil Nadu. 
I've taken somewhat closer values. I removed the decimal points just to get some, some, some differences in them. Now see, uh, just now we have seen that in some states, Indian states productivity is high, in some state it is low. So what are the reasons, what could be the reason? We have already discussed the yield gaps at world level. Those can be applicable at India level also, but Ramasamy et al uh, uh, has identified certain factors contributing to yield losses or reduction in yield kg per hectare. So in different states, you can see there are different uh, limitations, different stresses, different reasons for low productivity. For example, scarcity of irrigation water. Uh, it is uh, decreasing yield more in Tamil Nadu than other states. Similarly, drought. You can see in Kerala, there is no drought. There is no reduction in yield because of drought, because drought may not be there. But in other states, it is decreasing productivity. Cold temperature, Andhra Pradesh, no issue. There is no cold temp temperature. In Tamil Nadu, maybe up to 6 kg per hectare of paddy can be reduced and likewise. So please go through it. It is very simple to understand, but you can see the, the stresses that are responsible for reduction in yield. So wherever you get these stresses, stresses, the yield reduction will be there, otherwise not. So you see scarcity of irrigation water is, is, is very important. Then drought, cold temperature at anthesis. Anthesis is your flowering. If you get cold temperature or high temperature also, lodging can reduce the yield, low light intensity, soil salinity, low fertility, zinc deficiency, acid soils, alkalinity, iron toxicity, and so on. So you can see number of uh, yield limiting factors are there. Now in brief, you can see just, I have added some additional information to summarize that we are 1.27 billion in India and India accounts for only for 2.4% of the world's geographical area and 4% of its water resources. Water resources and 17% of world population. World rice area is roughly uh, 164 million hectare, 86% is in Asia and 10% in Africa, 4% America, just summary. 0.03% in Oceania is your Australia, New Zealand and allied islands. World rice production is roughly 756 million ton. 90% is in Asia, 5% Africa, 5% America, and some in Oceania. Food grain production covers the dominant part of the cropped area. 65% cropped area in India goes to food grain production. India is the world's largest producer of millets and second largest producer of wheat, rice, and pulses. Cereals occupy about 54% of total cropped area in India. The rest is your pulses. The country produces about 11% cereals of the world and ranks third in production after China and USA. More than or approximately 3,000 varieties are grown in India in different agroclimatic zones. Lot of diversity of rice happens in India. About one third of the total cropped area in the country is under rice cultivation. India is the second largest producer and consumer of rice in the world, 22.3% of the global production. Rice cultivation in Punjab, Haryana is started recently after green revolution. And area, India has largest area, India, India, China, and of course, Bangladesh and Indonesia. Asia produces more than 86% rice. Production is uh, highest in China, India than <coughs> Bangladesh. Asia produces and consumes about 90% of world rice. World productivity, Australia, Egypt, USA, Asia productivity, you have China, Korea, and Japan. And at continent level, Oceania, Europe, Americas. Yield gaps happen mainly because of climate variety, soil management, biotic, abiotic stresses. Why yields are low in, uh, high in Australia, Egypt, we discussed. And production in India is 116.4 mil, uh, million tons milled rice and 177.6 million ton coarse rice. Formula, you know, milled rice is equal to coarse rice into 0.67. Milled rice into 1.496, or you can say 1.5. Uh, rice productivity is 2.64 ton per hectare, which is 4 ton per hectare of coarse paddy. Kharif rice contribute 87% and uh, Rabi rice 13%. Area, UP, West Bengal, Odisha, Chhattisgarh. This is a sequence of area. 
मिल्ड राइस प्रोडक्शन वेस्ट बंगाल हाईएस्ट यूपी पंजाब प्रोडक्टिविटी पंजाब एपी तमिलनाडु 60 परसेंट एरिया इज इरीगेटेड एंड यू कैन सी हरियाणा हैज 100 परसेंट इरीगेटेड एरिया सो आई स्टॉप द रिकॉर्डिंग बट यू कैन आस्क योर क्वेश्चन फिफ्टीन मिनट्स so dear students you are welcome in this class and now you see diversity of rice grains and plant so learning objectives just these are pictures mostly you see the pictures here diversity of rice grains in shapes and size and colors and aroma so these are the four variables uh, uh, by which you can see the diversity shapes different shapes sizes longer shorter color red black yellow white whatever you like and aroma some may be aromatic and some may not be aromatic so but these three points are again i repeatedly teaching you the difference in uh, three kind of rice coarse rice rough rice or it is the uh, uh, the whole rice when you harvest the rice crop so this is the whole grain and the color of this may be straw color brown color yellow color brown color black blackish yellow yellow black reddish yellow or black there may be many shades of black yellow and and uh, black yellow and red and there there in between colors so you can find so in your uh, this slide you can see left side picture so this is your coarse rice the first one is coarse rice having hulls or husk and then next is red color is brown rice so the red color is because of the color of the brown layer you are seeing in the picture this brown layer uh, we have already discussed pericarp mucilus and so so it, it is three layered is, is structure and inside it is your aluron layer so this is the this will give you brown and this is your actual caryopsis if the brown layer is not damaged and if you germinate this rice this will germinate without hull also you should know it and then if you remove this uh, brown layer the red color layer then the rice will uh, appear white all kind of rices whether brown color is red brown yellow black creamy white whatever is it is from inside endosperm is always white if i say black rice if i remove the brown layer which was black in color then i will always get the white rice so milled rice is always white rice uh, many times people do be fool in the market that i am selling the red rice so inside it is white rice because some part of the brown layer was retained on the rice therefore uh, they can call it red rice if you remove just 30% of the brown layer then the 70% brown layer will will still be there on the end endosperm then you can call it red rice and this is the layer which is rich, richest in the nutrients so you can see the uh, after coarse rice you can see the brown rice so in international market whether color of the brown is red black or creamy but it is broadly known as brown rice whatever color of the brown may be there but commercially or in in uh, in uh, trade it is called as brown rice or some other names are also there and some people call this brown rice as yellow rice or black rice or red rice so brown rice may have tan colored reddish yellowish or black depending on the pigmentation in the brown layers so you can call it red rice brown rice black rice purple rice many kind of even green rice you would surprise then mill rice is polish rice how much uh, you are polishing up to what extent you are polishing so once the bran and germ layers are removed white rice remains on the inside all rice is white remember this point it is the rice bran that gives different types of rice colors bran is removed by milling and endosperm is always white now you see different colors of rice these are colors because of bran layers otherwise they are white you can see diversity in grain colors black yellow red greenish yellowish you can see aromatic rice diversity from orissa <clears throat> some black and so on i will not uh, detail these colors you can see yourself 
aromatic rice diversity in UP. Aromatic means they have aroma, they have scent. So all aromatic rices may not be basmati rice, but basmati rice are always aromatic or scented. So aromatic uh, rice diversity from West Bengal. They are aromatic rices from West Bengal. You can see their name, Khasna, Kalojiro, Kalojira, one, etc. And you can see aromatic rice diversity from West Bengal. Every state, every Indian state, you have a lot of diversity of rice varieties or rice genotypes, local varieties, and so on. So you can see the genetic diversity of rice land races collected from high altitude areas of Kashmir. This is a variability from Kashmir. You can see short grain and colored grains. And uh, you can see some uh, panicles, colors, colors of the panicles, <laughs> length, size. You can see uh, the shapes, sizes, colors. So this is from Kerala, I think, Raja Modi. And see the diversity. You can see the color of the brown layers. Green color is also there, you can see. Green, creamy, red, black, red. And variety of foods are made especially in South India, East India. We have variety of rice dishes and khichdi sambar rice from Tamil Nadu. <clears throat> you can see different scented varieties or fragrant variety, fragrance, scent or aroma. You can see Gandha Sale. Gandha Sale is from uh, Kerala, very famous rice. And Mullan Kajama, Kajama is also from Kerala and Govind Bhog from West Bengal. So they are quite famous rices. And this is Gandha Sale, permeates even the field in Kerala. Ambar Mohar, Ambe Mohar. Ambe Mohar is from Maharashtra or Pune. Chhatrapati Shivaji used to love this rice, Ambe Mohar. And see, now it is in news. Now some serious thing starts. Kala Namak is very important. It is black rice. From outside, the Hulls are black and from inside, bran is also black. So finest quality scented rice of India. It is equivalent to basmati rice and it has got black husk, uh, black and namak means salt. I don't know why salt name is there. Quite popular in Himalayan Tarai of Eastern UP. It is popular in, in uh, Nepal and parts of UP. Eastern UP, it, is, uh, it has got GI geographical indication uh, for uh, in Siddharth Nagar district of UP and uh, villages, the name of the villages are there. And it is the one of the best quality rice in India. <clears throat> if it is sown elsewhere, elsewhere beyond the uh, GI area, then quality deteriorates. So India, our institute is trying to make some varieties and uh, you can see this is Kala Namak picture. It is very tall, lodging is there, yield is less. So our present director, Dr. A.K. Singh has developed some genotypes, some varieties. This variety is developed by him and he has developed many varieties of this Kala Namak and very shortly they will be released for cultivation in Siddharth Nagar district and in some other areas of Eastern UP. He's spreading this kind of variety in that part because this way we can improve the economy of the farmers. So you can see some lines developed by him. And this is quite popular variety in South India, BPT 5204. You can remember this name. Pusa 44 from Ayari, hiring variety quite popular in Punjab. Pusa Basmati 1, the miraculous Basmati, miracle Basmati rice, first variety of Basmati developed from Ayari in 1989. And then Pusa Basmati 1121, very important milestone variety, developed from IRA. It is exported to many, many countries and earning big money. India earns big money from this variety, Pusa Basmati 1121. And this is PRS 10, this is Pusa rice hybrid, first hybrid, first scented hybrid in the world. It was developed in 2001 from in IRA. Pusa Sugan 5, it is not a basmati variety. It is aromatic variety with high yields of 5.5 to 6 tons per hectare. Duration is very so short, 120 days. 
and you can see some rises are very tall. You can see land races are very tall. Sometimes it can be eight to 10 tall, uh, feet tall. And Kalajira is from Odisha. Odisha like Kalanamat from Eastern UP. Similarly, we have Kalajira from Odisha. You can go into the details. Some varieties have been developed. Uh, aromatic varieties from Katak. I'll give you a list of the varieties. And Palakkar Matta rice, red color rice, is famous from Kerala. And this is Kovni Arisi or black rice, uh, unique to Cheti Nad region in Tamil Nadu. Special rice from Tamil Nadu, black rice. <clears throat> and the last one is uh, Katiu Yanam. Katiu Yanam. Is there anyone from Tamil Nadu? Any yes, sir. Have, have you known, uh, do you know this name? Katiu Katu Yanam. What is that? Kat Katiyanam. Katiyanam. So, uh, is it true? I got it from yes, some book that this is up yes, to. Sir. Okay. So, do you what do you, what do you know about it? <laughs> you eat it. Have you ever eaten it or not? No, sir. Oh, no, no, sir. But I can see it, sir. Okay, good. So, Katuyanam is uh, rice from Tamil Nadu, red in color. And height is up to seven feet. <laughs> Able to hide elephant. The Katu means forest and Yanam means elephant. So, keeps diabetes and arthritis. So, we have got variety of uh, rices which, can, which find their medicinal uses also. So, that is why it is true that India has more than 3,000 varieties of rice. So, that is why uh, you are seeing just it is tip of the iceberg I have shown you, but you can see much more varieties. Whatever I could collect, I could find, I have shown you here. And now uh, it is almost over and I stop here and I will also stop the recording and then we can continue the questions. I don't know how I can stop recording. <laughs>